Greetings, subscribers and viewers. This is the Tales of the Beautiful Game. Today we'll be focusing on the decline of Manchester United. We have seen wheels coming off spectacularly at Old Trafford. On my left is my resident analyst, Mbosana Manfred Makosa. On my right is another resident analyst, Brighton Dovo, a.k.a. Bio the General. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having us. <clears throat> okay, okay. So I think we will focus on the more on the sporting side of the club than on the financial side of the club. Okay, because that that's where I've realized that most of the the problems Manchester United have been facing over the years have been coming from. Okay, to start with Mbosana, what, what what can you say about? what we've been seeing at Old Trafford of late. Um, greetings, um, this is Nkosana, like he has introduced, and it's my pleasure to be here and to be able to share my views on the issues that pertain to Manchester United. Um, like, you, like you have asked, I think the real problem with Manchester United has been they've been lacking projects for a very long time. They have, don't have, they don't seem to be having a sporting project. And maybe they are starting now to have one, but for a very long time they didn't have a sporting project. Yeah, we can analyze what caused the, this, the, the situation to be like that over its many points, over this period of years. It's many, many reasons, but the main reason I think it's because they didn't have any sporting project. In fact, starting from the last five years of say, Alex Ferguson, in fact, to be general. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I get what you're saying, Kosala. And Bio, do you seem to do you agree with, with what Nkosana has been saying, or if you've got a different view? Well, thank you very much. Eh? Uh, to a certain extent, yes, he's right. It has been going, it has been like he's saying that the sporting planning has not been uh, on point. But uh, I just want to generalize it and say, no, uh, Manchester United problems haven't been more on that, but been, it has been more to do with. Uh, the succession plan of say Alex Ferguson, which I feel they didn't handle it very well, and is even affecting them even right now. Uh, if you look at it um, for the past uh, decade or so, let me say, let me take you back maybe from uh, say Alex Ferguson himself as the manager. Okay. That would be from 2010, just up to 2015. Eh? Okay, if you take that five year, let me just give you that five year breakdown. Eh? Uh, 2010, uh, Chelsea were the champions of the league, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Then a year to, re year, year to rest lead up the following season. Yes. 2011, uh, 2012, Man City took it away from him. Yes. Yes. Then the following season, it was him again. Yes. That was his last season. That was his last season. Look, at, look at the pattern now. We are no longer talking about the Manchester United side that has been dominating leagues. Yes. That has been good in the English league, uh, winning uh, the league three times in a row. If, if not twice, they, they always defended their trough. But uh, from 2010 to 2015, uh, 2014, somewhere there, uh, that uh, train started to, to derail now. Oh, we are seeing okay. now that uh, that dominance is not there anymore. Say, say, say Alex Ferguson himself is failing now to stamp his authority within that league, struggling to, to defend his title from 2010. That's, that's where I think it all started. Okay, uh, I, I hear what you're saying, but I think it was after the arrival of Anzelotti at Chelsea, and who was at Man City then, Man he, Man it was Man City. Man City. Yeah. So uh, I think based on that, basically when United used to dominate the league, it was him uh, and Arsene Wenger generally. But gentlemen, you, don't, you shouldn't forget that um, at that time United were also not buying players. They were not spending. These guys came and they were spending big. Uh, in Manchester City had, uh, could sign Tevez. Could have guys like um, Yaya Toure. United at that time, if you check between 20, 2010 and 2018 when Ferguson left, the only the market signing they, they had was Robin Van Persie only, if I'm not mistaken. They were buying I don't think so. So now the power had to shift, primarily due to the spending. The spending patterns. That's why many people believe that the Glazers, some even believe that the Glazers are not breaking the team even now. But I don't think that's true. It's just that at that era they were not investing. There was no project. They were just plugging gaps. 
No, you, you, are, you are right there, but I, I just want to uh, turn it away from you for a moment. Eh? Yeah, if we look at it, uh, sometimes it's not about uh, spending part, mm -hmm. it's about the brand. Okay. The brand menu yeah. was there yes. and it's still there. Yes. Let's, get, let's get that first. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, even though City came with money, Chelsea came with money, mm -hmm. uh, remember that's why I gave you 2000 from 2010. Let's go back. When Chelsea Chelsea project started with Jose, uh, Jose defended the league. You remember? Yes. Then uh, it was uh, Manchester United who took it away from him. Mm. Am I correct? Yes. Then is. look at how many years they defended it. They defended it. They defended it I think for three times. Yeah. But in this case, where where I'm coming from is now we are we are seeing a tired say Alex Ferguson. And uh, 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 looking, I, <laughs> the guy looked tired. He, he didn't have energy. To fight anymore. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I I get what you're saying. I do uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I get what, what, what he's saying. So I think he's saying the decline of Manchester United started when Ferguson was still there. No, I agree with that. Yes, that, that's my point. Okay. He, he, he built the decline of Manchester United. The, their succession plan was not one. Okay. Because it, it was clear to everyone that no, this Manchester United is now. Yes. It was aging. It was aging. And, yes. and yes. you look look at the average players. Remember, he had to ask Paul Scholes out of retirement. So you can see now that the wheels will not turn him off. It was no longer the say Alex Ferguson that we know. But I think the signing of Van Pace, yeah. it's another, another showing agent, out yeah. that no, yeah. it's no longer about the club. It's about Ferguson himself. Wanting to win that twentieth title, it was it was all about the twentieth title. Yeah. Yet he not won that title. He wasn't going to resign. Yeah, probably, okay. probably. But uh, isn't this the same thing that I've been saying? That I think the issue has been a project because Ferguson in his last five years there was zero project. He was now just plugging gaps. There was no sporting project. There was no investment into the team. They actually, I think that has always been the case with Ferguson. Even the identity of play was not there. They were just playing to win games. If you if you check the last season when Ferguson won the league, they were just playing to win. There was no this particular pattern. That's my point exactly. So so, okay. so, so, still so on we that. agree. So yes, I, I do agree. <laughs> with you on that. But now my point is, was there at any given time Ferguson had a sporting project? He himself. Yes, there was. Okay. Beside the class of ninety two, ninety three, that man was still class of two thousand and eight. Class of two thousand and eight. Who else? Um, Ronaldo, Rooney, Tevez, Bebato, um, Scholes, Carrick, uh, Owen Hargreaves, um, Wes Brown, John O'Shea, um, Jerry Neville, Patrice Evra, Van Tessa. That was a project. That was a project. That was a team project. Yes. Yeah. But individually, it was Cristiano that came out. Eh? No, 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 then, no, 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 no. I think that's team. an understatement. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> an understatement. He was just a figurehead of an already existing team. Okay. Yes. An already existing team. Yes. Remember, even when they won that league. They went to play Chelsea in the final of the Champions League. Yes. They struck it on that game. Yes. They struck it. But on it's, that it's, game. It's, it's because the squad was still a little relatively young. That stage was still, was still a little bit bigger for them. The Chelsea squad had mm -hmm. played Champions League before that game. So, it, a final before that game. Yes. So, they were familiar with the territory. United, that United team that played, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. They, they played Barcelona as well. So, <laughs> no, you know, we need to understand something. Fekas mm -hmm. never had that thing called sporting project. He, he never did. hated it. He, he, he hated the name Fekas okay. and the name Manchester United as the two brands. Okay, let's do this. Yeah. Can you explain to me when you say that he didn't have a sporting project what you mean? Uh, because we have had Fekas on replacing one team with another successful team, another successful team. I would take those teams that he was replacing. For example, there is that team with Robin Rom. Ruth Van Nistelrooy, Veron, Scholes, Giggs, um, Beckham, that was a team, that was a project. When that team was aging, he got rid of some of the players and brought in new ones and started another generation, Rooney, Wayne, Rooney, Tevez. I remember when we were humiliated by Benfica in, in Portugal, I think it was 2005, six somewhere there. He sta he, that's when he started the new project, that's when he brought Cristiano Ronaldo in, that's when he brought Wayne Rooney in, now he was starting another project. This project, I think that was a project. I think it was completed when Tevez and Pepper of came. Now it's a final team. So why? What do you mean by he didn't have projects? Because okay, uh, first of, first and foremost, I say that uh, there is fake and there is Manchester United. Yes. Both being the brands. Yes. 
Uh, it's like now. Uh, let me give you a, an example. Uh, if you if you are watching Liverpool on a daily basis, you can see even if they sign whoever they sign, they already have a team. Is it about uh, that player, or it's about the club factor and the Liverpool factor? That's what was happening at Manchester United. That's, that's Manchester nice. United, <laughs> wa no, Manchester United was controlling everything within England. Yes. Everything within England. Yes. Even if they they played whoever they wanted, they will win games in England. Yes, they were struggling outside England. Because at some point, it's some point. no, but, not at some point. But, but they struck it outside England. Under Fekerson. Under Fekerson. Even now, they're still striking. Uh, uh, I think uh, outside England, there was a time when when, we, he, when they played four champions, they played three Champions, Champions. Three Champions League final in four years. That's and, 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 uh, and they won one. And, so, and, so, so, wait, so, wait, 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 and, and, wait, 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 you're right there. But for a, team, they, for a team like Manchester United, yeah. that was in control of England, one of the most successful leagues in the world, mm. to win one out of three, it shows that no, we are struggling. It, it, it doesn't help to go out and play a final and lose. Being, being listen, Manchester United. But, but, listen, Bayo, uh, I, I, I think you, 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 we have to, to look at the team that beat them in those finals. Mm -hmm. It was Barcelona and Pep Guardiola. So he, it was very, very hard to, to, yeah. to play that you, team you at brought, that you, time. You have brought something, something nice here. You said Barcelona under Pep Guardiola twice. That's you nice. can't be beaten by one team twice. No, 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 no but, 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 but that's not fair. That's no, not fair. to me it's listen, fair. Listen, because, listen, because, listen, uh, for example, listen, what's but, happening to, uh, what happened to Klopp. Klopp now? You can't be beaten by a team twice in three years, four years. No, you can't. It's, but it's, 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 but it's that's not football. Real. That's football. Th that's football showing showing signs of that you know you are not good enough to play them, isn't it? So you are agreeing that you are not good enough to play the Barcelona's of this world. So you are telling me that that Pep, that Barcelona of Pep was uh, was good. Who was that, beating that, that team? That, who was beating that team? Yeah. And anyone can beat. And anyone can beat. No one was beating that Barcelona. Oh. Oh. Chelsea, oh, okay, okay. Chelsea. Okay, okay, Remember, okay. what did Barcelona? He never yeah. played Chelsea. Oh, what, what did Chelsea do in that phase? In that phase, yeah. they knocked. They, they knocked Barcelona Once. out of Champions. Yes, they knocked. That's, they but, knocked. But, but, they, but, but the, the point is okay, this: okay, 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 guys, listen. Uh, I think we we are we are discussing. Barcelona, not, not Manchester, at, at, at this point. All right. Uh, sure. uh, the point I wanted to say was that. Uh, the, Pep, uh, the Barcelona of 2009 and the Barcelona of 2011 were a bit different. They were not really the same team. It's like it's like Manchester United knocked Barcelona out of the Champions League in 2008 or on the semi-finals. They met them in 20 in 2009 and lost, and met them in 2011 again and lost. Yeah. So uh, I think what we need to focus on is. What I can say, the decline of, of Manchester United. We have seen, we have yet that focus on yet. Someone is saying focus on did not have a plan. Someone said he did have a sporting project, and someone is saying focus on did dominate the, the Premier League. Something that we, we we all agree on at some point. And what we did not agree on is that he struggled outside the league. But what I know is that it's fine sometimes to disagree. So uh, I think we can now carry on 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 the decline of Manchester United. Maybe now we can focus more on on when Ferguson had left the team. Okay. Um, I think when Ferguson left the team, two things happened. Those events were both so big and they couldn't be ignored. For example, you have had Ferguson at Manchester United for about 20 years okay. and 26 to be specific, I think. Um, then also you had the guy that he was working with, the CEO, chief executive officer Levy. They all left at the same time. And I also feel that the coach they brought in and the chief executive executive officer that came in, they were not up to scratch. That, those are my sentiments. Um, I feel Moyes was, was way out of his league at Manchester United. Number one, considering that the environment that was already there was bad. He didn't. He wasn't the man who had the courage or the boldness enough to come and say, and the ability to say, "I'm coming in here. I can do this. Let me fix this." Number two, I don't think Ed Woodward was well versed with the role that he took at the time, because which also affected Moyes. Because you then find out that who did they buy? 
fairly young, I think that was the era of signing, and there was no one else really to talk about. And Ferguson had left an aging team, and he had only bought Zaha, I think, uh, in his last as his last buy for the next coach, and the Zaha came in and failed. So I feel like that succession plan, both at the chief executive officer level yes. and at the technical manager. manager level or the technical or the sporting the sporting level, it was done badly. That was the turning point of Manchester United. Yes, under the last five years of Ferguson, they were struggling, but they were still here and there. But at that point, I think that killed the team. Those are my sentiments. I don't know what what's your take. By you are right, I'm with you. You're not going to bite my head off this time. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I don't, I don't. But I, I, I think Manchester United were not fair to David Moyes. Oh. Yeah, I, I think they were not fair to to the guy. Okay. Uh, considering that uh, the guy took a, a date Manchester United. But ever since when do you start to sympathize with the Intervertonian? No, no, it's, it's, it's <laughs> not that thing, see, but I'm just being realistic here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just being realistic. Uh, I, I'm just looking at the events. Uh, at the events that uh, we have a coach mm. that is living, mm. and uh, mind you, I, I'm, I'm still stuck with uh, on my point on Vegas. Yes, I'm living in aging team. Yes, uh, we, are we, are talking, we are talking about your Van Pierce's, uh, yeah. your Rooney's, yeah. your, yeah. your Vintage, all yeah. aging, uh, and uh, who, and we also mm. that this team wasn't gonna last for another season. Yeah, we agree because mm-hmm. even they said they would, they would, they would won the league, they would it was just it was one page league. Actually. No, it was just page no, it was page no, no, don't, 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 now David Moyes is is now a scapegoat. The, the I, I think he just oh, it. Okay. No, okay. Okay. Let, let me just let me put it. Remember, uh, he was turned to the chosen one. Yes. By who? By he was chosen by Ferguson. By Ferguson to to clear off who was missed, because other coaches would have come out open and say no, this guy left a dead team. But David Moyes won't, wouldn't go to the media and say no, I inherited a dead team. Because of his respect of who? Of Fekasen. Remember, Fekasen, uh, there was a time that Jose Moreno was linked to that Manchester United project. Yes. No. They knew that, Fekasen knew that Jose, as, as outspoken as he is, he would come out open and say, no, this, this team that I'm inheriting here is dead. Oh, he would come out open. Yes, the chosen one being who? My, my baby. Oh, okay, okay, Fayol, let me ask you something. Okay. Uh, David Moyes is a coach. Yes. David Moyes knows the importance of evaluating the team. Yes. So, David Moyes, I think he did evaluate the team. And what signing did he, he attempt to make, or what signings did he make to make sure that the team he became in a state that he, he, he wanted it to be? Ah, okay. If I... Uh, if you still remember, maybe let's let's move away. Remember, uh, there was a time where we had an engagement where I say no. There, there are coaches that are uh, that enjoy being a Manchester United coach, that enjoy being a Liverpool coach, that enjoy being a Chelsea coach, a Real Madrid. It, it it was all about. It was not about him evaluating. No, he never evaluated anything. He was happy that he was going to coach Manchester United. See, my God, that 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 alone tells me that he was not ready yes. to coach Manchester United. He was not ready, yes. but he was happy. Let, let's remember, he was so happy. So we but Yes, I, I'm not I'm not running away from that, but still, now you have given him the coaching job. Thank you. Did you pick him? Yeah, but who did yes. you want? He, he's happy. No, Manchester United. Manchester United signings you have from for a long time. Even say Alex Ferguson himself, his signings were coming from nowhere. There were nowhere signings. Manchester United never, they, they won't go and chase a player that Real Madrid wanted. They, they would rather wait for those known names and sign them and make them a team because of say Alex Ferguson. So David Moyes, who, the, the, manage, the, 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 the management knew that uh, at Manchester United we, we make players, we don't sign players. Okay. But now the, the, the telling thing is, 
all you have changed. Football has changed. Like, okay. It's now about signing who you sign. All right, so, Fek- okay. Moez, what Moez does is, let me go and fetch one one of my I own. Okay. It was it was about Fenian. yes, Danny brought in Fedan. So, oh, okay, listen, you spoke about United making players, not signing big yes. players, but I think United had made a, a brand that that could attract everyone, especially in the in the Premier League. We saw them signing Van Pes. Van Pes was a top player then. Mm-hmm. We saw them yeah, signing Depato, Tevez, Andy Cope, even if it's a bit far. He came when he was a top goal scorer. There was Rio Ferdinand, he was a huge talent. There was Michael Curry, who he kept signing them wrong. So uh, I think if Manchester United at that time, they were bossing the league. Yes, you are right. And then, so at that time, I think they could nearly get everyone that they wanted from, from, from the league. So what, what, what I don't understand is that David Moyes was happy with signing Fellaini as his, as his top signing or not. That's what I, I'm not really, really sure of. As, as, which players did Moyes need? Or which players did Moyes tell the board to, to, to sign for him? Yeah, I think he wanted um he wanted a Bayern Munich player, I can't remember who it was. Oh, I think he wanted a Bayern Munich player. I don't remember who it was. Um no, 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 no. I I forgot. Was it Tony Cross? He wanted Tony Cross, yes. Tony Cross ended up going to Real Madrid. He wanted Tony Cross. But the thing is this, you can't he ended up getting for that. No, he ended up buying for that. <laughs> no, it's, it's not, it's not, no, he thing. ended up getting Another thing that you have to realize is this, is the profile of the coach. Who was coaching Real Madrid when Moyes was wanting Tony Cross? Because I can't not choose to go and play under, um, no, no offense, Eddie Hall, Eddie Hall or Hans, uh, when, Jose, when Jose Moreno wants me. It, it just doesn't make sense. Pep Guardiola wants me, I can't choose to go play for Brighton. The coach, or the coach that has been coaching Brighton. So if players also need to work with somebody that they will trust with their career. I don't think Tony Cruz believed that Jose, I mean, um, Moyes was the right guy, David Moyes was the right guy for to coach him to his next because he was 23 at that time. So at some point, that's why I say this guy, they took somebody that was not ready. You, you, were, you were saying United made players. Who made, who, who did David Moyes make, even at Everton? You are signing these players. <laughs> so you, 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 you find this is a buy, this is a, a, a coaching replacement that doesn't fit the criteria of the club, whether it be it grooming, be it tactical, be it even pro- profile, because sometimes you bring in, um, like a Manchester City now, you have Pep Guardiola playing this tiki taka, then you, uh, H. Jose Moreno becomes available, then you say, you know what, let's change all this, let's bring this guy, because he's got what? This profile. This guy didn't have a profile, didn't have the ability to groom like United wants to groom their youngsters. He didn't have the stature to hold a club like United. That was a very bad signing. Yes, it, it may have been a scape, it may have been used as a scapegoat for other failures of the chief, chief executive officer, but it was a terrible signing. Uh, because Jose Mourinho was available at that time. Yes. Could, by available, I mean he could have been enticed. Yes. Carlo Ancelotti could have been enticed. And these coaches don't want this kind of jobs. And then you go and get David Moyes. That uh, was terrible. I think United, will, um, you still remember what they did well when they brought in Ferguson around 1986. He, he was nearly a no name coach coming from Scotland. Exactly. And they were patient with him yes. until his project started to came into, into being. Maybe they wanted to, to do the same thing. But the problem now was that the Premier League was, was now was now much tougher than before. Yeah. And, and they were not willing also to be patient to say, okay, we'll give him five years, but he gets better. So even if we don't qualify for the Champions League, they were not willing. Uh, I think they were willing, <laughs> but the pressure they got from the fans and from But the after sponsors. those 89 crosses, do you think 89 crosses in one game and no goal, do you think you can keep the court? <laughs> I mean, like, I guess. <laughs> 89 but, okay, crosses in one uh, game, no we, goal. We, we have been on Moyes for too long now, yeah. uh, which, I, which I still personally feel that um, Manchester United. So you didn't, support, no, didn't support him. Yeah. So uh, to to back up my my, my, my point on Moyes, yeah. let's go to the next coach Van whom they hired. Yes. It was Louis Van Hart. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 I like the Louis Van Hart part 
because I followed it even before he was appointed. Okay. The main purpose of Van Hal to me was to study a single ship. Yes. I still remember those words very well. Uh, Van Hal came in to study that single ship and he does very well. Then what happens? Hey, then the project got abandoned. <laughs> it's the same thing I'm talking about. United is not a project still. So, so, uh, so you now you understand, the problem was not about Moyes. It was about Manchester United as a football club. Because Van Hal did everything right. Promoted, um, even won something. promoted young players, what you're talking about, won them in FA Cup. Created an identity. Uh, I'm not sure about that, because maybe you don't have an identity. Anyway, just leave it. <laughs> so but he, created he created his own identity. Yes. That was the reason for his downfall. Okay. Because uh, they didn't want it. They didn't want a Van Hal uh, identity. They wanted a Manchester United what? identity. Which one is that? The Manchester United identity. This one the wing and cross it. Yes. That, they gave it the 89 crosses in one game. Remember, Why did they fire the coach then? You remember, uh, now, let's, let's remember it very well. Yeah. He was fired because of this famous attack, duck, duck. Defense saying duck, duck, duck. Because <laughs> the legends who have played for Manchester United knew that was not their football. Yeah, they couldn't so, attack. <laughs> yeah, they're putting. So he, he had to be fired because of bringing a different kind of what football to Manchester United. But were you not getting results? No, the, the results were not coming. I, I would argue mm. the results took long to come. But eventually they did come because a trophy came. But I think the other part of his downfall was failing to qualify for the Champions League. I think that made it quite easy. But considering the injuries he had got that season and his promotion of young players and how he handled that 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 period where about 12 or 13 players, first team players were not in the squad. I think it was brilliant. I think they were supposed to give him a chance. Like like we agree on this one. This one is it's clear that the problems of Manchester United are way beyond coaches. They they have always been at the administrative level, at the board level, because they seem not to have a plan to say this is the way we want to go. I think that's the main point that the reason why Manchester United where they are now. And I hope it's changing. Uh, okay, I, I hear you. But uh, I think the problem, they, uh, I personally think they do have a plan. But, he, but uh, I think he, he, they implement a, ro a, a wrong plan on a wrong court. Oh, okay. it, it's like social was there, social was giving for about three years. Three yeah, I, I think they're being patient with him. But I think they must have been more more patient with Van Gaal than Sosa. And, so, and, so, so I think Van Gaal was given a short-term project and Sosa was given a longer-term project. Something that I think they, they must have... But uh, talking about social project and Van Gaal project, mm -hmm. so Van Gaal lives in Manchester and they are point their own with Sosa. No, no, they appoint Jose Mourinho first. Yes. Remember, they appoint Jose Mourinho. Now, there are two factors in that uh, Jose Mourinho lives Van Gaal transition. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Luis Van Gaal type of football is different from Jose Mourinho's type of football. And yes. you expect Jose Mourinho to be successful with a project that was started by someone with a different identity with him. Then it gives you a question, who appoints these people? Is it, long, is it about continuity or we are starting up afresh again? Because Luis Van Gaal is it's someone playing Dutch football, carpet football, also even. Jose Moreno brings up a different, totally different, different type of football to you. Then you say that uh, it's continuity. How is that continuity? Uh, now, uh, I, 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 you, okay, you, you, you asked that, how is that continuity? Mm -hmm. I think uh, replacing Van Gaal with Mourinho, they must have given Mourinho some time. Because, he, 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 as you said, the, the playing philosophies are very, very different. So Mourinho needed some time to, to get the players he wanted. He wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but I think the main idea of playing in Mourinho was to win some trophies. Um, yes, no. Yeah, right. I think so. A, a, a fast pace, the trophy, exactly. with no identity. Exactly. Yes, I said, Manchester United don't have identity. They believe in trophies than identity. Ah, I mean, I disagree with that. Okay, let's 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 do this. Yeah. Um, I agree with you on on the fact that it was starting a new project when we brought Jose Moreno, and I feel when you're starting a new project, then you need to back it, and I feel they didn't do the same, because the Van Hal project was supposed to culminate in Ryan Giggs taking over the, the following season or two seasons okay. after the season he was fired. Okay. Van Gaal was left with one season, and then Ryan Giggs takes over. 
that project. You even had moving upstairs. That was the that was the plan. So when Jos when Manchester City appointed Pep Guardiola, uh, in Manchester United had this panic, and they just fired one. That was basically what happened. It was because Pep Guardiola had come to, to Manchester City and they thought to themselves, um, the city is growing. Our rival, it's more like what happened with Cristiano Ronaldo. Our rival is growing, so we might as well respond to this. So they abandoned the project they have so as to respond to one club out of 20 or 19 other clubs. That was city. So, so but, yeah, uh, I, okay, wait. Uh, I, I hear wha what you're saying, but uh, I don't think it was a wise idea to respond to, to Cardiola with Mourinho. Because, because they were there in Spain. Mm -hmm. They were there in Spain. We saw someone leading up, uh, up to 12 million. Someone leading up to 12 million. No, no, let's not go there. No, no, so, so, no, no, no because okay, wait, where, wait, where wait, you are going, we are going wait, to pay each other. Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. I, I'm, 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 I'm not saying we must talk about the Spanish. No, no, no. no. <laughs> because the, the Spanish part of it, man. You, you, you are summarizing it wrong. Okay. You are summarizing it wrong. Because okay. when you say that one on top trophy is, yeah. Uh, you're still not uh, going back to the foundation of it all. No, but you can go okay, to the foundation. Okay, okay. No, okay, so, 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 okay, yes, okay, I'm okay. saying. <laughs> okay, you can take to yourself some things. We we'll we'll get that one day. Gadiola, that Pep okay. Gadiola Moreno uh, reunion was going to be good, especially for a menu. It was it was a very wise decision for them. To wise? Do. Yes, it was a wise to decision. To abandon the project and no, that. No, that, that project had already failed. It didn't. You just said it. They had yeah. even failed to reach the top four. But that doesn't mean failure. It means failure. I mean, no. Because it was a long-term project. No. Who was long-term project in an already dead project? Who was long-term projects? Because after after Africa said we have got a Moyes project, that doesn't kick off. We have got a Van Hal project, which which you abandon something. when it starts bringing it's fruit. Sick. It's not failing. Wait, which fruits are you talking about? FA Cup. The, FA Cup, but uh, Champions League football, no. Do you know what happens with the but, Champions but, League football? Yes, they lost on goal difference to who? To City. Yes, they lost on goal difference to Manchester City. Manchester City, it was either Manchester United or Manchester City. Mm -hmm. They lost on goal difference. I think it was plus. Nine or something. That was the difference. So you can't say that this coach has failed. He lost on goal difference on his second season, mm -hmm. building a totally new squad, mm -hmm. and he's won you a cup to say, I'm going there. These are the fruits. This is where we're going. He, he didn't fail. There they panicked. They abandoned a perfectly growing project mm -hmm. for a marquee signing. Okay. Okay, let me agree to disagree with Thank you. you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for because, the change. <laughs> because now you are saying that uh, the project was uh, going on. Yeah. But don't you think Manchester United looked at the Louis van Hal factor mm. that he always built, built, built with no results? But now they want what? The results. results. It, it was a question of should we wait for him? Yeah. Should we wait uh, for him? And, 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 and I thought they, they went for the other one. No, this guy. He has done it with Parker. He has done with with his Bayern Munich in Germany. He always built, 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 and failed where it matters most. But can, okay, so can, now, can I respond now, to that? No, now it's a question of. Can, can, I, can I respond to Wait. that? Wait. It's it it Ajax. It no, you are talking uh, uh, at his home country, <laughs> like what, like what uh, uh, Eric Ten Hag did uh, in his home country. Can, 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 yeah. So we we can't guarantee him can, in a foreign can, land to continue. Uh, where he yeah. left him in Holland yeah, yeah, yeah. and okay. expect him to come to England where there is an established uh, Pep Guardiola, there is this, uh, there is Klopp, there is uh, Antonio Conte, that's a different ball game now. Okay. So my point, I'm not saying no, you are right, but what I'm saying is maybe they looked at Van Hal as a coach, he is a Madinda Love type of a coach to me. He builds for you, someone continues with the project. Mm -hmm. So, so wait, by you. So, after Fan Fan Hal he, he, he has built something for someone to continue, yes. they bring in more in someone who is it's totally different. You see, yeah, that, that, that's why I say they lost it, but, but because no. they just wanted a uh, continuity of which isn't uh, Pep Guardiola was available before, before Pep City Guardiola changed them down. What was the actually went to New York to, to negotiate with Pep Guardiola. Come to Manchester United, he turned them down because he didn't seem to trust the environment to, to be able to be conducive to him to bring the results.
sports or the style of play or the baking that he did. And he didn't believe the environment was suitable for him, so he turned him down. So I think, um, I think Vele firing LVG at that time, whatever was happening, to bring whoever was on at that time. But, but the timing of it was off. But uh, don't you think that it was going to be another exciting uh, moment? To have uh, Pep Guardiola on the other side and Jose, in Jose, you, see, you, don't, run, you don't run a football club in uh-huh. moments. Uh, it's, it's not a romantic story. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a football club that's supposed to be based on projects. So, 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 and so logic. So logically, Moreno was not the right person. No, he wasn't. And abandoning that project, he, maybe he was the right person at a later stage. But at that point, when your project is just starting to take shape, yes. you abandon it. The, the message you are sending to your competitors, to your players, to your staff. It's just totally off. It creates this culture that we now have accumulated that's a little bit toxic. Because now nobody knows what the future is like. There is no stability. And when people are insecure, they tend to be uncontrollable, ungovernable, or selfish. So that created this toxicity that we now see at Manchester United, where you have players leaking things into the press, where you have some players pretending to be injured and refusing to play. But wasn't Jose the victim of that? He was, he was but the thing is, exactly... He, he was hired at a wrong time. So when you come in at a wrong time, you suffer. He suffered. Jose was not begged. Jose suffered from a bad squad. Jose suffered from a poor chief executive officer. He, he suffered. But uh, I personally think Jose was declining also uh, at that time. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, I yeah. personally think. Because ever since, ever since he left Inter Milan, Mourinho has been going down. Down, down, down. Okay. But I, I, I'm not sure about the decline of Moreno as you are, as you are putting it, that he was declining and stuff like that. I don't think there was a decline in Moreno's side. I, I think Moreno's problem has been love for man. Yeah, that's because it's declining. <laughs> you, see, you understand? The, the love of man uh, contributed to his uh, downfall, actually. Because look, he wants to read Madrid. Yeah. And uh, at Madrid. Uh, he he stop he stop uh, the dominance of Pep Guardiola, and uh, I, I, I I'm not shy to say it off. Uh, maybe for uh, some other time, we want to ask how did he stop it? But I still believe that. No, I believe you're right. He won a trophy. And yes, he, he stopped uh, the damn the, uh, the 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 romance that you said of Pep Guardiola because Pep Guardiola was now romancing that league. He can do any anything that he want about that league. Moreno came. Did whatever he did, stopped it, took a sabbatical leave after failing to win the league. Then uh, went went to Manchester United. They they, they, are str- they were struggling. Then what happens after that? Uh, he, won, he, he won them their last trophy. Am I not correct? Yeah, he won us the Europa League. Europa League. Yeah. He also won them the League Cup. Yeah. Oh well, that's that trophy. <laughs> he also won that's them the trophy, league trophy guys. Got about. Yeah. Whatever. But that that's a, that's a trophy that he also yeah. won. Yeah. Actually, he didn't want to... Uh, no, he wanted to... They said only the Cali, Cali, the Shield. Oh, the shield. Shield. Oh, okay. But the thing is, there's no, you, you re, I, the decline I see it in this fact. When, when that team won, when that team won, it was a Van Gaal team, basically. <laughs> because he won everything in his first season. Second season, he was dismal. He didn't do anything. Third season, it was but, worse. But, but wait, the second season isn't not the time when uh, the squad started to happen. It's the third. Uh, no, no. Uh, the, the second we already uh you are talking about the third but the second season is where all the damage was done, was done. he was not remember, the port, end of the yes, remember the, the paul popka effect it was dead no it started on the second season no it was on the third it, it started on the second and moved on to the third serious yes oh it's they started on the second season uh, jose moreno didn't want paul popka to play that third season Hence, paul popka came out open because he knew that the coach didn't want him but instead of the board backing the coach, they went with the player and showed that the player is bigger than the club. That's created. Okay, oh, okay, guys, we have heard, heard, heard it. Uh, I don't know whether there is some, there is any other sporting projects that you need to add before you move on to the financial side of the club. Um, there is nothing except that I'm excited right now. <laughs> I, I tend to love that coaches, I think they come with a clear identity, they come with clarity of what they want to do, and they tend to foster discipline. So I'm excited with Ten Hag. I hope he doesn't suffer like the other coaches have done under the, the hands of the sport. But also Ten Hag is coming at a critical time, almost like a, a, a David Moyes era, 
where the chief executive is also changing. So okay. let's see how maybe this second time around the adaptation will be better. And I'm, also, and I'm also happy that Manchester United went for Eric Ten Hag. Why? Okay. What? I don't see challenge from him. Okay. Mm. That's one thing that I don't see. I, I don't see challenge from, from these Dutch coaches. All right. Mm. Okay. They, they, they are just fine where they are. Hey, but are you okay? Just talk for <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, 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 so to me, <laughs> to, to me, it excites me that Manchester United will always be behind you. Oh, okay. Because yes, they're still hiring these Dutch hey, coaches. Now your two colors come out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. Okay, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I think now we can go to the financial side. I think Financial United has been the boss. There's nothing much to talk about. I mean, they've still spent, what, 1.9 billion on players in the last 10 years? They won nothing. I think they're not suffering. <laughs> I think financially they're the boss. They're not suffering. Yeah, no, I think it, that's what's making it. Them... That was his strength. Mm. Okay. It would, what strength was on the finance. Uh, uh, T-shirt sales will give you money. Uh, I sign you. This player tomorrow, I got my money back. I do this, I do that. Mm -hmm. Everything. Actually, that, that that's the other thing that collapsed the Manchester United. Yeah, I agree. Too much focus on money. They they, they focused uh, too much on the finances than on the on yeah, the of play. Mm -hmm. They never worried much about the, the field whatsoever. What what was more money -centric. concerned about uh, the money that you made. Because look at the, look at their signings. Look at their signings. They went for uh, Paul Polk, how much? 90, 90 million. So uh, somewhere, there. somewhere there. For a player that they let go free. Yeah, but the, but the coach wanted the player. So who, who's, who, who, which coach wanted that? Doesn't Mourinho want it? No, you are not fair. You said Mourinho inherited a Louis Van Hal team. Yes, but, but you are failing to think that Mourinho. Uh, when Moreno came in, Manchester United had already made a bid for for no. for Paul Pogba. No, Rem remember, re go back to go back to it. Manchester United do, do, actually do, do, wanted do, Paul Pogba season before. Do you know when Manchester? That's why that's why he ended up being a ninety million player because Juventus knew how desperate they were for do, Paul Pogba. Do, do, do you know when Jose Moreno came to Manchester United? Yes. When he sent his proposal, it was in January. So already the, that deal was agreed on. Before Louis, Louis Van Gaal was just told okay, after oh, the okay, cup. Okay, oh, okay, 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 okay. Because the morning had already come in. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, guys. Uh, I think we, we have heard, we have discussed and discussed. We have agreed well <laughs> and disagreed, which is very, very normal. We don't have to, to agree on everything. Yes. So uh, I think by that, I would like to, to, to thank my residents, analyst, for being here and for sharing their views. Uh, and and telling us w what they think and what they feel, it, it be, because in in some in some discussions we ended up hearing which side or, or which team or one seem to be supporting. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 so that's what I'm trying to say by by saying they they, they show they, they show what they think and how they feel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, gentlemen, till we meet again, uh, I think I will call you again next week or so to, to discuss. Today we are talking about Manchester United. We will be discussing Liverpool. We be discussing Real Madrid. We'll be discussing Mourinho and Pep as Bayo wanted to do. Yes. We'll be discussing Chelsea. We'll be discussing a lot of things in the coming weeks. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>